Hey everyone, this is Anna and thanks so much for visiting my channel. Today I'm putting together a video to share the seeds that we're going to be growing in the garden this year. I will mention if I grew them last year, how well, how well they performed. And then uh, I will also insert some of the images that I took last year at the garden um, just to kind of show how uh, the garden progressed and how beautiful it was throughout the season and uh, things like that. So I hope you enjoy. We put our garden in last year, it was the first year, and uh, so we are we're trying to balance out the soils and you know make sure everything is uh, growing as well as it can. But we did have some challenges last year. Um, hopefully we can address those this year and um, everything will be all squared away. Um, to give you an idea of our garden space, we have nine four by eight foot beds and we have an enclosed garden space because we have a lot of deer and moose in our area and even elk herds that come on the other side of the ridge from us. Um, and then we also, have um, a two by 16 foot bed of blueberries. And then I also have a blackberry patch that is um, two line, two rows of berries and they are approximately 20 feet long. So there's about 40 feet of uh, blackberries intermixed with raspberries, red raspberries and um, sweet and yellow raspberries. So um, that's kind of what we have. And then I also have two um, specific beds that I plant um, that I put in last year that I plant with cut flowers and they are by the chicken coop. Um, they're in my original garden space that the deer always decimated. So I just turned them into um, cut flowers and they are two foot wide um, by eight foot wide or 10 foot long. Um, so two by 10 and there's two beds. So um, I do have to wrap that bed with uh, deer wire or berry netting basically to keep them out of the, the uh, the uh, beds as the seeds start to grow and sprout, um, but that's okay. The netting really can't be seen. So, um, but the important thing is, is that we can keep them out of the garden. So let me go ahead and share with you the seeds that we're gonna grow this year and just get on with it. All right, so I'm gonna start off with um, the cool crops, then I'll move into um, the later season crops. So the first thing that we'll plant in the garden is actually in there right now, and I planted garlic. There's two different kinds of garlic. Um, there's a silver skein, silver skin, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, and then there's a red garlic as well. Um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but there's garlic growing out in the um, in the bed right now, and I'm super excited. This is my first time growing garden up, uh, garlic up here in the Pacific Northwest, and um, I was never successful at growing it down in Texas either. I think it's just always a little too warm down there for where we were, so I'm excited to have our own garlic this year. So the other thing that we'll be putting in early on are radishes. I love to grow radishes. I poke them in the garden all season long. Um, just wherever there's an empty spot, I'll throw in five, ten seeds and just get a little short little squat um, set of radishes growing. They grow really fast. You can harvest them from seed to harvest in about 28 days. So super fast growing and great for kids too. If, if you want to get your kids interested in gardening, grow some radishes because they grow really fast. So we're going to be growing the uh, crimson, crimson Giant. These are delicious and they get really large, but if you pick, if you pick them um, a little bit young, um, they'll be super, super tender. So, but these can get, you know, upwards of two, two inches across in diameter. And we pick them a little bit sooner than that and they are super sweet and tender. Um, we'll also be growing the uh, French breakfast. We grew th these last year as well and they are uh, very delicious. They have a cute little white um, hind end on them, I like to say, a tiny white fanny. Um, we're also gonna grow the cherry giant, which are similar to the crimson giant, just not as large. These are like the typical radish you see in the grocery store. <clears throat> and then we're also gonna grow the five color radish mix again. And these were wonderful last year. Um, really fun, it's just a mix of different colors of radish. And then I, we liked them so much, I purchased this um, Easter egg radish mix. And I, I'm pretty sure it's probably the same. Um, but anyway, we planted this, or uh, purchased this quarter pound of seed this year uh, for the garden. So um, really delighted with uh, the radish choices that we'll have this year. We are also gonna grow a lot of lettuce and the opening packages are the ones I grew last year. Um, and I'm gonna grow them again this year. They all did really well. Um, we did the Simpson Elite. This is just a green head lettuce or um, leaf lettuce. We grew this flashy trout back. This was really fun. Um, this was probably my second favorite lettuce that we grew last year. Um, it's really sweet um, if you pick it young and um, it's just really beautiful. And it lasted a really long time. It was really slow to bolt here, but we did have a kind of a cool spring uh, in early summer. 
um, we grew this um, Irish eyes, which was beautiful. This was such a pretty bronze color. Um, I really want to grow it again just for the color alone. Um, we grew this black seeded Simpson. This was a real great performer for us here. Um, it, similar to the Simpson Elite, I'm sure. Um, but again, it was just a really great lettuce. And I think my favorite lettuce that we grew last year were the um, was this red, <coughs> excuse me, this ruby lettuce. This lettuce was gorgeous. Um, I'll definitely insert some pictures of our lettuces uh, during this part of the video because the lettuce we grew last year was amazing. And then the red romaine was really pretty, so we're gonna grow that again. This is just so beautiful in a salad bowl. And then we grew the um, Chef Medley mix, this Tom Head, um, excuse me, Tom Thumb Butterhead. This was really uh, beautiful as well. I was surprised that I could get such a nice um, tender lettuce like this to grow really well here, but it was gorgeous. And then this was another really gorgeous um, lettuce. This was the uh, Red Sails and just really beautiful. So some of the ones we're going to be growing this year also are the Burgundy Delight, the Heat Wave Blend, and this uh, Green Ice Lettuce. This one I used, um, I planted this one in the fall as kind of a late harvest, and it didn't do well. I think we just, I just planted it a little too late. So we'll try again this year. And then here's another one we grew last year was the Salad Bowl Red. And then we have the New Red Fire Lettuce, um, this Valentine mix. And uh, we did grow some red mustard last year. This did not perform well for us, but I think I planted it too close to a um, marigold that got ginormous and kind of shaded it out. Um, I did not grow the burpee bib yet. I'm gonna save that for this year. The Four Seasons lettuce I'm gonna try this year, and then the red salad bowl uh, we'll also try this year. So those are our lettuces. Next, I'll show you the kale and spinaches. So we always grow uh, Bloomsdale spinach, even if it's just in a flower pot um, before we had the garden. Um, I also grew this in Texas as well. Um, this is always a strong performer for us and it's always really delicious. And I plant succession, so I'll plant, uh, one week I'll plant a row and the next week I'll plant another row and then another row following so that we kind of have ongoing harvest. Um, we also grew Scarlet Scale, <laughs> Scarlet Kale last year, which was uh, really beautiful. Um, and I actually couldn't tell you the difference between the Red Russian, um, the Ragged Jack, and the Scarlet. So I'm guessing those are probably the same. And I also grew um, oodles and oodles of the <clears throat> Blue Curled Scotch Kale. And this was my favorite kale to use. Um, it was really reliable to grow. It was beautiful as it grew. Um, it was uh, very much pest resistant. Um, so I'm going to grow a bunch of this this year. Last year, I also grew this uh, Lacinato kale. Lacinato kale. This is like a dinosaur kale. This was uh, really beautiful as a young plant, and it was very, very delicious. But as it got older, it became sort of like a um, trap crop for aphids. So I don't know if it was drawing the aphids to the garden and they were just drawn to this, or if it was pulling aphids from every other plant. So I'm going to put this just in one little spot in the garden this year and see um, if it continues to be a trap crop a trap crop for aphids, which is great. That's just fine. Um, at least I know they're not on other plants. So, and then I did pick up this uh, premier blend of kale and then, oh, here's another lettuce, uh, just a Roman uh, that got stuck in the wrong section. So those are the um, kales and spinaches that we're gonna grow this year. And I'm convinced that they're gonna be just as delicious as they were last year. So we'll also be growing some icicle short top radishes. I grew these last year. These also got put in the wrong spot. So I'll stick those in the radish area. Um, we grew this bok choy last year. This was really delicious. Um, we picked it really young and it was just great to add into salads. And I was surprised, surprised again to see that I was able to grow this here. So really fun. I grew it in the row of tomatoes, um, in front of the tomatoes. 
Um, we also grew um, Swiss chard bright lights last year and this was delicious. I absolutely love this. Um, so I will continue to grow that because I love it uh, mixed in salads. And then I grow um, quite a few basils. Um, this is just a, what is this one? A lemon basil. Um, grew this last year and it was really delicious. And if nothing else, I just like pinching the leaves in the garden and making them uh, smell good. Um, this is a purple basil that we grew last year. Um, I planted this one, uh, again, a little too close to a marigold that got a little out of control. So this one kind of got shadowed out. So I'm gonna try it again this year. Um, here's another container of lemon basil and then a Thai basil as well. And then I grow two kinds of dill. Um, I grew the uh, mammoth dill and the bouquet dill last year. So I'll grow those again this year since I still have the seed. Um, last year I grew a whole bunch of dill thinking I would need it for making fresh dill pickles. And we had like two cucumbers and they were really pathetic cucumbers. So last year was a dismal year for us for cucumbers. And I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if it was because I planted them too early in the spring and they got stunted or if it was the bed was uh, retaining too much moisture or just what the deal was. So that was uh, one of the crops. The cucumbers is one of the crops that we need to address um, this year for some changes. Um, also going to be growing some beets. Last year the beet crop failed, but I was able to at least use it for um, greens, um, beet greens, which I love mixing into salads. Um, so we're going to be growing the cylindro beet and then this little dark Detroit and then the gourmet blend, which is a mix, color mix. So we'll be putting those in the ground. And then last year I also grew these bunching onions, which were really great. These were super fun to have in the garden. This was the first time I had grown them. Um, and it was really nice to be able to just grab a couple onions and um, run in the house and throw them in a salad. Um, we grew the Walla Walla sweet onions from seed and they were delicious. I grew a red onion from set and they did not perform as well as the seed, um, the, the uh, sweets that I started from seed. So I'm gonna continue to do this this year. Um, this is the carrots we grew, and since I have leftover seeds, I'll just grow these again. Um, this is the rainbow blend. Um, we did a row of the deep purple exterior with orange interior, interior for the purple haze, and we grew the atomic red, and we grew the Danvers. So since I have seed of all of those, I'll just grow those again this year. And I'll kind of do just like a, probably just a mixed row. I'll mix all the seeds together and just plant a variety of carrots in the row. We are also going to grow some uh, sugar snap peas. These are the sugar Anne, and these are English bush peas, the green arrow. And we grew both of these last year, and uh, they did great. And these um, say they don't necessarily need trellising because they don't get up to three feet tall, but we will trellis them on grandma's old garden gate trellis. And then we'll also tre trellis them on probably a short uh, cattle panel as well. So these are going to be really great. We also grow these on the porch in uh, patio pots um, up on the porch by the house and last year the deer didn't find them so I'll try it again this year and uh, hopefully the deer won't find them this year either so these are going to be really delicious super excited about those So we do grow quite a variety of squash. Um, we always love to grow a, a variety of squash. So we're gonna continue to grow the seeds that I have that's, that performed well. This is the sunburst squash and these are little patty pan, yellow patty pans. Uh, we're gonna just grow a bush zucchini. This is nothing special, um, just a bush zucchini. <laughs> um, we're also gonna grow this one here. It's the golden scallop. This one is a little bit different than the um, sunburst squash. The sunburst has a little green end and the uh, sunburst or the uh, yellow <clears throat> golden scallop does not. We are going to grow the little scalloped green squash and we're going to grow the partial eclipse squash. This one did not perform very well for me last year but I think it was shaded out so I'm going to try growing it in a different spot. Same thing with this total eclipse squash. I think I just had it shaded out um, by a sweet meat. 
um, which is a really large pumpkin type vining plant. Um, so I'm going to try growing that in a different spot. And then um, we are going to grow this one again this year, although this one didn't look too stripy like this. Um, it pretty much just looked like a pale green. But regardless, it was it was yummy. Maybe it's because I picked them so young. And then the one that we always get uh, lots of um, production from, from is the white bush scallop patty pan. So those are all um, going to be really delicious. So we have um, those seeds to grow as well. Uh, like I had mentioned, uh, cucumbers last year were just dismal for us. We did not get, I think I literally picked two cucumbers and I think I just fed them to the chickens. Um, so I'm going to try again. Um, maybe this year will be better. This is the National Pickling Cucumber. We're going to try growing those. Um, this is the Tasty Green. Um, this is actually the cucumber that I actually was able to pick last year. And then the Market More uh, Cucumber. We're going to try those again this year. Um, we're going to also do the Olympian the cucumber 58, um, SMR 58. I have the Calypso cucumbers. Oh, and here's a pepper seed that doesn't belong in there. Um, but those are the cucumbers we're gonna try again this year. Um, I might do some research, research to see if there's something else that might be recommended for our zone. Um, but these should be all, these should be all okay. So I'm thinking it was just either last year or the soil or something that caused our cucumbers to fail last year. <clears throat> Um, as far as peppers, this is a sweet pepper that we're going to grow. Um, I did not try this last year, but I thought I'd pick it up and try it this year. But I did grow these last year. This is the Jimmy Nardello. I did grow these, and they were um, just coming on. They were The peppers were really long and green and beautiful. And just as they were starting to turn red, a rabbit came in and ate them all. So I'm going to try growing these again and see if I can maybe... Uh, fence them off or something like that to make sure that the rabbit can't get to them because these were a definite favorite of the bunny. Um, um, some more herbs. Um, we've got some lemon balm, which I love growing. That will probably just come back naturally on its own this year in the garden. I'll probably have to weed it out everywhere, but that's okay. Uh, we have some chives that we're going to be planting, and we have a flower bed up by the house that has a, a bunch of chives in it as well. So these will just be um, quick little... Um, uh, organic grown ones, organically grown ones that we can use in salads. Um, this is chamomile and um, I know this is a very invasive plant. I'm hoping that maybe with our cooler winters up here it will cause some of it to die off um, instead of naturalizing so uh, widespread as it can in other areas. But this was really fun to grow. Um, the little flowers were so sweet and beautiful and I did enjoy drying them and putting them in tea. Um, so I'm going to grow this again this year, maybe in a flower pot down by the garden. Um, just some cilantro. Um, this bolted really fast. I think I just planted it too late. And then here's some parsley that I will try again. And then I'm not going to be putting this in the garden this year. I did last year and I pulled it before it even matured because it's covered in thorns. Um, so I'm not going to be growing this again this year. Um, it's pumpkin on a stick. It's a type of eggplant. Um, I was mostly just drying or growing it for some like fall decor, uh, but we're not going to be growing this again this year. I'm going to set that one off to the side. So some other squashes and zucchinis that we're going to be growing. Uh, this is the trombetta squash. This is really fun to grow. These grow, it's like a zucchini. Um, it's a tender tender squash like a zucchini. Um, or if you let it season on the vine and harden, you can treat it more like a, um, a butternut squash. But uh, picked young and green, it's very delicious. And um, these were really fun to grow. They get really long. Um, and like three feet long if you let them keep growing. So this was really great. I'm gonna to continue to grow it. They were also very popular with the deer because it vined outside the fence and um, deer buffet. So I'll we'll have to make sure that I vine it inside the garden this year. Uh, we're gonna be doing this little gray zucchini here called Alexandria squash. Um, this, um, I don't think, yeah, I think I did grow this one last year, but I don't know that I planted it early enough for it to mature. 
um, but I did plant some other gray zucchinis, which were very delicious. So if you've never planted a gray zucchini, um, they're just a smaller, smaller type of zucchini. Um, I recommend them, try them out. They were really prolific and um, they taste delicious. So uh, we're also gonna be growing the eight ball squash again. These are just fun to have. Um, they just grow in green um, orb shapes, but they, they taste just like zucchini. Um, we're gonna grow the golden zebra zucchini um, and the slick pick squash. This is not a very attractive looking squash, but it tastes good and it was really prolific. So we'll grow that one. Uh, this was very prolific for us. This was the uh, uh, spaghetti squash, and we still have some from last year that grew that we haven't had yet, but these were really delicious, and they grow um, really easily. One of the ones that failed for us last year was the Table King uh, Winter Acorn. I'm going to try it again, though, because I love acorn squash. Again, I think it was just where I had it planted. Um, and here was another failure for us, the butternut squash. Um, but again, I think it was where I had it planted. So I'm going to just uh, switch things around a little bit down there this year and um, see if I can get a little more success with these on a trellis. Um, here's the gray zucchini that I was mentioning earlier. This is really delicious. So if you've not tried these, um, this is the Sabalo. Uh, this was really good and very prolific. And then just another black um, bush zucchini and uh, Pascola zucchini, which is just a type of black zucchini. So lots and lots of squash. We do like uh, lots of variety. Um, and they're just fun to grow different kinds. Um, see what flavors you like best. You know, sometimes just a black zucchini can be a little boring, but if you if you mix it in with a yellow or the, the fun shaped um, patty pan squashes, it just adds a little variety to your meal. Let's see, back to the peas. Um, last year we grew these sugar snap um, sugar magnolias. These were gorgeous. These were um, with the purple shell. These were so pretty. They do need trellising because they do get tall. Um, I grew these um, up on the patio in a pot and I also grew them in a garden on a trellis and they got really tall. So they need a much taller trellis than I had provided. Um, I planted them last year on grandma's garden gate trellis and it just was like half as high as they needed. So, but really, really fun. Um, we also grew the pea shelling green arrow. Um, those were great. We also grew the Oregon sugar pod. Again, can't complain. Um, here's another package of the sugar magnolias and the Cascadia snap pea. I don't know which one, which place I grew these, uh, but we didn't have any trouble with the peas. So I'll grow all of those again. Um, we are also going to try the rocky honey rock melon this year. Last year we grew a different kind of melon, um, Kajari melon, I think, and it failed for us. I just don't know that we have a hot enough season and long enough season. Uh, so I'm going to try the honey rock melon. Um, it does say it takes 80 days, but um, we definitely have 80 days of growing time. Um, I just don't know that we will necessarily get hot enough, but I'm hoping that since they're a smaller, like personal size melon, that they'll be okay. We grew the uh, Scarlet Emperor pole beans last year, and these were gorgeous, and they created the most beautiful beans. Um, the seed pods were really long and kind of fuzzy, um, but if you let them harden on the vine and age on the vine, um, they create a hard bean that's a purple and pink color inside and really large. You get about three beans per pod. Um, so not a very prolific um, bean, but I'm going to continue to grow them because um, not only that were they just fun to grow, um, and kind of a novelty bean, but also the hummingbirds cannot resist these flowers. So last year we had so many hummingbirds in the garden and I, they were really drawn to those flowers. Um, this is uh, just a regular bean pole, um, pole bean. Um, we'll, we'll grow those just because I have the seeds left over. And then this is just a little gourd that we grew last year in some of the corn that we had. Um, but as for um, pole beans, we are going to be growing um, the Royal Burgundy bean, which I think is a bush bean. I think I need to do some research on this one. I'm pretty sure this is a bush bean. And then we're also going to be growing the Rattlesnake pole bean. So this is going to be our pole bean of choice this year. Um, and see how these do for us. Um, I grew a handful of them last year. They were really delicious. They did come on nicely. 
um, but they weren't the first beans that I planted, so um, they did have to struggle a little bit to get going, and then the season then was almost over before they just met their prime, so. Um, but we're gonna be growing these this year. We grew just a couple of corns last year, um, just for decorative purposes for use um, around the house in the fall. We grew the glass gem corn and the painted mountain corn. Neither one of us were really, neither one of these were really big performers for us, but I also had them really crowded with some sunflowers, so that may have been why. Uh, but I'm gonna plant just with the seeds I have left over this year, uh, plant those this year, and um, maybe they'll do a little bit better, so we'll see. But they're sh they are so beautiful. The um, glass gem corn is amazing. It looks like stained glass. And the painted mountain corn, they were really lovely as well. As for our tomatoes, um, we are going to be growing the husk tomato ground cherry again this year. These were delicious. And I didn't think this plant was gonna grow here. Um, I was really surprised that it did. If you've never had these, um, it doesn't vine like a tomato, it just grows in a, a large bush. Um, but it's very prolific and it puts on these little round yellow uh, fruits that are enclosed in this cute little um, skin here, paper skin. And when ripe, they have a very sweet taste that kind of resembles, I think, pineapple. If you eat them a little uh, young before they're too, too ripe, they have kind of a nutty taste. Um, but when they're ripe, they are so good and so sweet and it's like just eating candy out in the garden. So we'll be definitely be growing those again this year. Um, we're gonna try the Jubilee tomato this year for the first time. So I'm hopeful about that one. Um, we really love our mid-sized yellow tomatoes. They're really really beautiful and delicious. Last year we grew the Lemon, Bro Lemon Boy hybrids. These were really prolific. They're not a very flavorful um, tomato in my opinion. So um, I think I just have a couple seeds left here. Um, I'll probably poke them in the ground just because, but I probably won't purchase this packet again, um, this variety again. The Black Crim is my absolute favorite. This these tomatoes were so delicious last year. Um, we're definitely gonna be growing more of these this year. Uh, Bonnie's Best, this was a reliable grower for us this year. Um, it produced a lot. There were a lot of uh, fruit on the vine and they were all consistently consistent in size and shape. Um, so just a real good overall solid performer. Um, I don't know that I'll necessarily continue to purchase this one. I'll grow another one this year, but um, uh, there are other flavored, flavorful tomatoes than, than the Bonnie's Best. Uh, the Brandywine tomato was also a beautiful tomato for us last year, and I'm gonna continue to grow those as well. Uh, the Mortgage Lifter, um, this also was a really large, nice tomato for us. Um, I think I like the flavor better of the Brandywine and the, um, the Black Crim, so I probably won't try this one again. Uh, the Lucky Tiger, this was amazing. <laughs> this is the best flavor um, tomato I have ever had. Um, it was really hard to tell when they were ripe because they don't really change that much color, but oh my gosh, when these were ripe, they were delicious. And same with this one here. This is um, Brad's Atomic Grape. This is a beautiful tomato. It's larger and darker in color than the Lucky Tiger, but the Lucky Tiger is far better, in my opinion, for flavor. The Blue Beauty was a heavy producer for us, and the tomato vines were the strongest of all the plants that we grew. Um, and uh, just a really beautiful tomato, so I'll continue to grow those. The uh, Mandarin Cross, this was a gorgeous tomato. It was almost like you could see into the color. It was so beautiful. So I'm gonna continue to grow these. These are a large slicing tomato. They're not a very prolific plant, so you don't get a lot of fruit on each particular vine, um, but they were just so pretty. Um, definitely something I enjoyed having in the, uh, the ripe tomato bowl. The Sweeties were great fun. These are the ones that have the really long trailing uh, stem of tomatoes on them, and these performed really well for us, so we'll grow them again. Um, the Italian Romas did not perform well for us at all last year, but I think they were shaded. This um, plant was put in a spot that was heavily shaded by some of the taller tomatoes. I think if I plant this one where it can get more sun and is not so shaded by the taller varieties, it'll do better. Um, but last year, this one did not perform well for us. The gold nugget tomato was a stellar 
for performance for us. We had it on the end of a bed and it spilled out over the edge of the bed. I had to cut it back and cut it back and tie it up and it was covered in tomatoes all summer long. Um, <clears throat> and they weren't as sweet as like a um, sun gold, but there were by far um, a lot more tomatoes on the vine. So this was a real standout for us. And the Moon Glow, um, this was another one similar to the Lemon Boy. Um, it produced okay, um, but it was not as pretty as the Mandarin Cross. So I don't know that I would actually purchase this packet again, um, but um, it, it performed well. No complaints, really. The Bella Rosa, we've not tried yet. Um, I think I got this free in a pack of uh, seeds, maybe. Um, the Arkansas Traveler. Um, I don't think I'll grow this again this year. Um, it just didn't perform as well as the black crim and the, um, the brandy wine. Um, although it tasted fine, just did not perform as well. The Cherokee purple, we're not gonna grow again. Although we love, love, love this tomato. Um, it just does not produce enough tomato on the vine for us. But gosh dang it, it's a favorite for flavor <laughs> and, and color and it. it's a gorgeous tomato. I just wish it produced more. The green zebras we're not going to grow this year. They're kind of neat and a novelty tomato to have in your bowl, but difficult to figure out when they're ripe. Um, you can miss them really easily and then the birds get them. Um, and they don't taste as good as some of the others, like the black crim. So I'll save that space for them. And the, the uh, Siberia cool weather. Um, this tomato grew well for us. Um, it was a fine tomato, but didn't have any standout um, uh, characteristics about it. So last year was kind of the uh, time for us to kind of grow our tomatoes and figure out what grew well here, what we liked. Um, and while a lot of them did really, really well, um, there are a few that we won't be growing again. So that's good to know. I think last year in total, I grew 20 different variety of tomatoes because there were a few that I picked up at the store, like the Sun Gold. I think I just bought a start at the store, but everything else we started from seed. Um, and uh, I, amazingly enough, things did really well for us. So as for flowers for the cut garden, last year we grew uh, some chocolate cherry sunflowers and they were really gorgeous. Um, I really liked having them for cut flowers and uh, we'll grow them again this year because I have uh, literally like a pound of seeds. Um, but I didn't necessarily like them all on their own because you can't see them from a distance and where we have our garden, it, you can see it from the road and but it is quite a ways from the road. So I wanted to have flowers that you could actually really see from a distance. Um, the chocolate cherries were not one of them. Um, they're not a very large flower. They're probably five inches, six inches across. Um, some of them a little bit smaller as the season goes on, but um, you couldn't see them from very far away. So I'll continue to grow them in the cut garden, um, cut flower garden, just so that I can have them in the house. Um, but I'll continue to grow the really big yellow sunflowers in the garden as well. Also in the cut flower garden, I grew these Sensation um, Cosmos. These were really lovely. And I just grew a variety of other sunflowers as well um, in the cut flower bed. And then in the garden, I grew some mammoth sunflowers, the great big yellow ones. I grew some lemon yellow, um, which, or lemon queen, I think. Um, 
those I love because they send out a flower at every single leaf shoot. Um, so we'll continue to grow those as well. And then I just have a little variety here that I have no idea what it is. Um, so these will be a surprise. Some of the other flowers we grew last year, um, I did grow this Mexican sunflower in the garden. This was gorgeous. It got really, really tall, like eight feet tall. Um, oh, it says to grow it in an 18 inch pot and that the um, plant itself is going to get five to six inches in height. Um, so where I planted it was really not ideal because it got like six to eight feet tall. It got really, really big. So now that I know that, um, we'll be planting that in a different location. <laughs> Um, I grew these mini zinnias. These were adorable, and I'm going to grow them again this year. Um, the dwarf thumbelina zinnias, again, they were adorable. They'll be perfect in the garden. Um, I did grow these giant double velvet queens um, last year. They were okay. I think I'll put them in the cut flower garden this year instead of in the garden. And then I will continue to grow the um, California giant um, zinnias as well. They're the ones I grew last year. Um, these apricot blush. <laughs> I desperately wanted these to grow because I think the color is so beautiful, but they didn't grow for me. Um, more of the purples and the pixies. And these I did not like. They grew and they were pretty, um, but I don't like the look of the speckly flowers, so I'm not going to grow those again this year. Um, just a couple packages of snapdragons. Those are just fun to throw in the flower beds at random. And um, Here's a nasturtium blend that I really like. These did so well for us this year, or this last year. Um, I'll definitely be planting those again. I like tucking them into the corner of the flower bed so they kind of spill out into the aisles. And then here's uh, some forget-me-nots that I just need to throw in by the pond. And I think the last package of seeds that I need to review are the marigolds. And I love growing marigolds. I do not want to grow these though. Um, I did not like the red, um, I did not like the color pattern of these particular ones. So I'm not gonna grow those again. I'm gonna stick um, with the ones that are uh, more like the uh, big yellow and big orange um, and maybe the solid red where this is kind of the um, duotone, duo tone. I didn't particularly care for those. They were not my favorite. Um, so I'm going to be growing this one again, the tarragon. This was really beautiful. Um, just some old fashioned wildflower mix there. Um, this is the heirloom zinnias cut and come again. Those were just fine. Evening sunflower sun. These were really beautiful. These ones I tucked in, um, the blackberry patch in between somewhere where the new plants were planted and they came up really lovely. Here are the mammoth sunflower grays that we grew. Um, these were wonderful. These were gorgeous, the Garnet Star. These come out with like with a leaf at, or a flower at every leaf joint, really beautiful. And the Lemon Queen, these were gorgeous. We also grew those, the Moulin Rouge. Um, these were really beautiful. They're all, they're all pretty, how can you go wrong with some flowers? Um, we also planted the giant wine zinnias and these were gorgeous. Most of my zinnias last year were orange and purple or uh, pink, orange and, yeah, pink and orange. Um, these were really pretty as well. We're gonna grow these again this year in the cut flower bed. These are the seashell blend, and so they have each of the little petal, instead of just being a single flat petal, petal is a tube, and so those are really pretty. There's the example of the flat petals, and then just a couple of free packets there.
that's what we'll be growing this year. Um, it should be fun. I need to get out and get the beds prepped. We don't have any snow right now, so I need to get out and kind of clean up the old stuff and get things squared away, but we'll see what we can do about that. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's a lot, and I'll probably um, thin down the seed variety selection for this year even more, but uh, just thought I would share, and then I hope you enjoyed the video. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and have a great rest of your night. Bye!